Okay, hello, welcome to this assembly of my um, Lenovo Helix 2. This is a tablet device with an integrated dock. So, hope you can see it there. I can make, uh, open it up, it has track points. This is the uh, better keyboard. I don't see the lights there. It has backlight, it has uh, the track point, it has an additional battery in it, uh, as opposed to the normal um, dock. And most important, well, it's a dock, you can remove this uh, the tablet itself. So, put this away. Now, uh, this assembly itself is rather easy, I uh, dare to say. So, uh, we'll start up, uh, out with removing the first uh, eight screws on the back. So, I hope the focus is alright, just some noises, first time I make such a video. So, let me get this out. So, uh, yeah, I made a, I did that already, and I have a drawing of the uh, internals. It looks a bit shitty because I didn't have uh, white paper. But, uh, well, I put the screws on the dots because this is the back side, this is battery, and so on. You will see it. Uh, it should do the same because there are about 34 batteries in here, uh, 34 screws in here. So that might be useful because I will not be showing you the single screws to reassemble it and I won't show reassembly steps. I think you should be able to do that on your own, it's not that difficult. So it takes a while, I probably will remove these. So um, now you can just pry it open carefully from the top. Oh, last time it did really well. Okay, just put your finger or a suitable tool below the hinge, pull carefully, same on the other side, and then you can just open it. Uh, don't open it too wide, move it around and carefully open it here too. I do this with my fingers. Uh, don't have to do it that way. Oh, well. Okay, let me just take a quick picture. Uh, see here is the battery. Then here uh, is the controller board with uh, the USB, power supply, display port, and the connector to the dock connector up here. So, but first we start with this huge battery. It's actually uh, for battery cells. There are also some screws around there. And here in the corner, put it on my drawing again. I prepared that. If you're doing this uh, the first time, you should uh, take your time to. Now uh, remove this plug here carefully. See, I did that. Just put it here with fingers and put it back. If you have tweezers for that, you can do that too. That's actually a bit better, but that's okay. So now you will see here is this uh, cable for the speakers. You just remove carefully this glue pad, put it somewhere where you will find it again and it doesn't get lost. Same for this one, and we can remove this. So this is just bigger cable. Shouldn't if you kill that, it's not that bad. I believe you just lose sound, but I believe you don't want to do that. So next thing to remove is this board up here. Uh, let me just take a picture again. Uh, before we unscrew everything, we remove these plugs. Um, careful with these. These ribbon bands are very fragile. Uh, if you use too much force, you break them and then you're screwed. So you don't want to do that. Uh, this one here is not necessary to remove. Uh, I didn't get it out and, uh, well, you don't need to get it out either. We'll, we'll see. So first, this one, uh, you move this flap up, a flap, and then you can just pull it out gently. You also use tweezers for this. A lot of videos do that. I don't have my tweezers here because I'm in my student flat and well, I 
has these little squeezes. So you should be careful when doing this. I did this about a thousand times, so uh, if you do this the first time, be very gentle and yeah. Uh, here is some glue tape. Uh, I already removed it, so it goes off easier than for you probably, but uh, just be careful and don't break this cable. Uh, you will need a new touchpad if you break it. So I'll just put it there. Okay, see, shouldn't be bent. don't bend it too much. It will also break them or I literally break them. Be careful. Uh, last one here. Like power cable, just pull it out. It's one of the classic big ones. Uh, can't. It's difficult to break these. Well, uh, let's go on with more screws. There are uh, four screws on this board, but you won't be able to remove the board from removing the screws. You will see that later. Oh, actually, you are able, but uh, we want to remove it completely. Now, you could try to remove this too, but uh, I didn't want to break anything and I uh, wasn't sure how to open that up without uh, tweezers or a small screwdriver, so I just did not do that. Because rule number one, when this is sampling your working laptop, be careful. So now we're also removing the hinges. Uh, the, the hinges have some more screws which are already removed, which uh, held the cover in place. There's one more screw in this uh, small valley here. Second one on the other side of the device. And uh, yeah, side. Now, this is connected. Uh, only put on yeah, the hinges. So we can remove this board. Okay, you move it in that direction because there are some little clips. And now the hinges and the board are only things connected. Uh, should be more careful, be more careful than me. You can now remove it. Uh, I should be able to, I uh, have it in the wrong position. So, oops. Uh, memo for you, if you're doing this, put it in a, another position. Oh, it's actually has a place somewhere. No, I'm just as careful. Okay, just moved out carefully. Okay. Yes, uh, so this is a board attached to the uh, hinges. Uh, it's quite sturdy assembly. My old uh, laptops always failed on these. Uh, but I believe this one will not fail there. So, now we removed that and all we're left with is the keyboard assembly and the touch uh, pad assembly. I will not be removing this because I don't need it. If you want to remove it, there are uh, four screws. Probably remove them and pull everything out. So, now this is the keyboard assembly. Um, and, well, the thing is, I got this as a spare part. You see, it looks different. There's the same connectors. This uh, strange metal thing there for the track point is also there. Uh, this is just a piece of foam which you can carefully remove. You can put it there too. So, maybe you see it. Uh, so this is part of the keyboard assembly, not the whole assembly. So, you will later see why I had to disassemble this again and make a video. Uh, well, don't need uh, this foam but before it uh, gets dirty I put it back on here. So now there are a lot of screws, uh, sorry for that. I'll start with the other ones. It may actually look as if this was um, just uh, multiple parts. Well in fact this assembly consists of multiple parts but um, they're all glued together. So. Um, if you try to be smart and only uh, unscrew this metal plate, like I did the first time I tried, uh, I disassembled this, you will soon figure out that you won't be able to remove it. So, disassemble the whole thing. Well, okay, 
before we remove this, let me just uh, take away the loudspeaker cable because it's glued there. As always, be careful. Uh, it's just loudspeaker cable. It's quite uh, massive for an, for an embedded device, but uh, well, you should be as careful as possible with these things. So I just uh, put it up carefully. I see there's a lit, little bit of uh, tape. I will just remove that way. So that was the keyboard assembly. Uh, this is the main frame of the uh, keyboard dock. As you can see, uh, well, loudspeakers are still in there. We can probably pop them out. I won't try it because I need this. Uh, there are some uh, screws for that. Then there is a screw one, two, three, four more screws. And you should be able to get at the trackpad. There are more screws in here. But, oh, well. So, but now, for the reason I'm doing this, uh, I'll put this away. You don't need the frame anymore. I will take pictures of the frame later. Now, the thing is, this is the actual keyboard assembly. You have this big metal plate and it is glued in place. So this is my spare part, the US uh, layout. You can see uh, Swiss layout or German layout uh, from the size of the keys. And this American layout, I need this because else I'm going insane. And um, why did the flash fire? Okay, anyway, we have, um, you may now see the problem. This is glued in place over the whole back. And um, I tried to apply heat to get this uh, to loosen and I can remove it. But, um, well, you can see here, this is also some plastic and it's glued to the keyboard. And if you use heat, you will just uh, remove this plastic too and I would rip apart my working functional keyboard, which I want to sell actually. So uh, this is not the best idea you can do. Um, someone said I should use a knife. Well, you need to go through all of this. So I have to put it, you don't get it below here because of the form. Up here, there also you can see, let's see if you can see it. Focus, please. No, it's not focusing. So you can see here, there are little metal endings showing up, so you won't get the knife below here. Um, you can use it from the side, but then you need a kitchen knife of this length. And um, a kitchen knife putting down here to get it free. First, you would cut these, I suppose. And uh, it's not precise enough to do this. So uh, basically, you can not remove this metal plate without breaking the keyboard. And uh, the metal plate, it's not massive metal. It's uh, very thin. Uh, it gives it a lot of stability. You can see here, you can move it a lot. This one is more difficult. And uh, but well, if you try to remove this with force, um, you will just um, bend the metal and it will have, to have the wrong uh, form when you reassemble it. And then some keys might work very differently or not at all. So you can not remove this, it's impossible. Uh, well, but if you got the right assembly, uh, be careful when you order from, uh, to make sure you get this one with the metal. Well, you can just uh, put it in, reassemble the whole thing and have another keyboard or a working keyboard again. Uh, and just to prove this actually the same, uh, you can see here and put it uh, over each other. I hope it's correct for the camera too. Yes, uh, there it's perfectly the same on the top, on the left, on the right and on the bottom. It's really the same, only the metal plate is missing. So I suppose I got a keyboard which uh, was taken out of the production step uh, one step too early. So um, they should have sold it with the metal plate attached. They didn't, they just didn't know this keyboard is, uh, the device is not that widespread. So, um, well, this happens, but uh, yeah, well, I have to show them that. So that's why I'm making the video. Uh, you can see again here, it's, it's really the same. Look on the from the top to uh, trackpad. They both uh, have backlight. At least the seller is claiming this has backlight. I believe him this has backlight. So, well, you can 
see here again it's really the same the only thing that's more with the uh, screw pads is that there are uh, uh, metal pads around here surrounding it well I hope you get my point uh, we'll take a picture of this front it's really really the same uh, also good quality it's uh, I I believe this is uh, he has a slide on manufacturer here and if you turn this around you can see here's a, a very very similar pad maybe the older version but uh, should be the exact same manufacturer as for the original Lenovo keyboard so this is pretty good quality I'm looking forward to use this so another picture the two keyboard assemblies well, a bit much light there. Yes. Well, now I have to reassemble the whole thing. Luckily, I have a drawing and didn't shake too much when taking the moving the things around on the table. Well, you can see it's exactly the same. The track pad. This one is a bit used, I have to admit now. I had it for three, four weeks. This one is very nice. So. Well, anyway, hope you now know how to disassemble your uh, Lenovo Ultra, no, not Ultra Pro, but Lenovo Keyboard Dock Pro or Pro Keyboard Dock uh, for your Helix second generation 20CG. So, uh, well, hope you enjoyed it and happy hacking or disassembling stuff. Thanks.